Um, and then now I appreciate Ken Lane. Obviously, you need no introduction. Um, our amazing moderator and, and chief evangelist. Um, appreciate you uh, showing us a little bit about your uh, your talk, the API first, not API last. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over. Um, Thank you so much. All yours. All right, I appreciate it. Um, well, welcome everybody. Uh, happy to coming down off of the Waz talk a little bit. So I'm gonna uh, try to channel it and be balanced and, and measured for this talk. But uh, so I'm keeping an eye on the Slido. I will just kind of continue through my talk. I urge you to uh, ask your questions maybe towards the end, but feel free to ask you know, as, as it's ongoing and I'll, I'll either answer or I'll wait till the end to, to, to queue them up. So, all right, well, let's talk about how you be API first, not API last. Um, let me introduce myself. If I can get my slide to work, there it goes. Um, my name's Ken Lane. I'm chief evangelist here at Postman. Uh, some of you might know me as API evangelist. I've been studying the API lifecycle for the last decade. And in the last year, I just uh, joined Postman to continue the work as part of the Postman team. Uh, just kind of telling stories as part of our events on our blog and just generally in our community. Uh, but also working on, uh, you know, with our customers directly when it comes to listening to their stories about what they're facing and then translating that into, uh, you know, what what it is that I do as, as chief evangelist, helping people understand what's possible with APIs. So I... This is a this is a phrase that I use a lot. I've heard used a lot. It's it's been around for a number of years. Um, I would say four or five, maybe about six seven years ago. I started hearing it, and I think it's a it's a phrase that means a lot of different things to a lot of different folks. And what I'm going to try to do today is I'd like to elevate you just above that conversation and show you the 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 wider impact of API first and and hopefully elevate what it means to you. I think if you if you talk to developers, you're going to get two answers for what is API first. First and foremost, you're going to get developers who say, well, it's just about developing an API before we develop mobile applications. And that's true. That's definitely API first. You're 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 thinking about APIs before you're you're building any specific endpoint or project, which is oftentimes the more tangible piece of what we're trying to do. Uh, the second answer you're going to get um, among your more progressive developers is you're going to get an API uh, design first response, meaning that we uh, we design the API before we ever write any code, and and we plan that API using Open API, Async API, JSON Schema, and Postman collections. We use that to uh, kind of inform the conversation around what is this API, what's it going to do, what business stakeholders is it going to uh, uh, engage with. And so those are mostly the two answers you're going to get from folks. And they're both accurate. They're both right on the money. And they both encompass uh, a lot of the ideals of what's, what's being API first. So if you're not doing API design first and you're doing API code first, don't uh, you know listen that, hey, you're doing it wrong. Uh, you're not. You're, you're. You're. It's a. It's a subset of what you should be thinking about and doing, and it's and it's healthy and normal. Uh, if you're doing API design first, and you're you're thinking about your your APIs ahead of time, uh, that's great. Um, let me let me kind of show you the bigger picture and 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 why it matters and how you how you might want to be shifting your views a little bit. Hi Kim, welcome. Um, I, I switched back to the chat, so let me look at the, the questions real quick before I move on. No questions. I'm going to keep it on the chat, and that helps me know that you guys are there and makes it feel more like there's an audience <laughs> other than screaming into the void. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll monitor the Slido for you, Ken. Okay, that'd be great. Um, I'll, I'll poke over there once in a while, but the chat feels a little bit more, more human. Um, so before we talk about what is API first, let's... Uh, Let's recap what is an API, because I'm guessing you, you're you're seeing it still from a pretty low level. Even though APIs are pretty high level, I think uh, it, it helps to kind of step back and think about it. So applications, don't think of this just in terms of, of a mobile application or a web application. Think of it uh, um, in terms of applying something. 
your anything that you're going to apply um, any sort of application that you're going to need to take care of as part of your daily work this is a i'm talking about a programming interface for the this so your entire job what you do on a daily basis everything you interact with having a program interface for that so all the resources you need to do your job uh, the contacts that you need, the content for the website, the tweets, the videos, the podcasts, the audio files, all of these resources that you are dependent on across your job. This is what APIs are, pro this, is, this is what an API is about. It's a programming interface so that you can apply those resources. And it's also your, your capabilities. So it's your organizational capabilities. It's being able to watch a, a video, play a video, send a share a video. It's uh, being able to tweet, post a tweet, post a Facebook, post an Instagram. These are all of your, your organizational capabilities. Uh, it's, it's adding a CRM record. These are what you should be able to, to, to accomplish and the digital resources you're gonna need access to on a daily basis to be successful at work. And then if you're in, in, the, in the API building aspect of this, you know, I'm just, for resources and capabilities, this is very much a consumer putting, putting resources and, 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 and utilizing capabilities. But if you're building APIs, you're building products and services, digital services that you wanna make available to folks, this is what, what you're gonna be, uh, what you're building. So APIs, this is just a, an interface across your entire organization. And, and what you should be uh, doing to accomplish your business objectives each day. So let's look at who is API first. So pretty much every leading brand in technology. So if you look out across the, the playing field, uh, now all these companies aren't uh, API design first, some of them are still code first, some of them are design first, uh, some of them are more internal APIs, some of them are more public facing, but they're all have realized, you know, the importance of APIs early on. They're leading with it. So you think about what eBay and Amazon have done to commerce. Think about what Facebook and Twitter have done to social. Think about what Amazon's done with the cloud. And then once we ended up with the mobile phones in our pocket, think about, you know, the impact of Stripe, Twilio, Instagram, Expedia, all of these uh, brands have changed kind of how we do business on a daily basis and it's APIs, They're, it's them being API first, seeing the potential of this and, and putting, putting it forward in their operations. So from my vantage point, what is API first? It's seeing APIs, seeing APIs everywhere beneath the surface of everything that we do on a daily basis, all of the applications that we use, all of those apps on our phone, Everything is APIs, whether we're, we're, it's an internal application, it's an external partner, uh, that you see APIs. And more importantly, you're prioritizing APIs and you're planning around this. You're planning around their usage, their construction, their evolution. So you're thinking about, you're seeing them, you're prioritizing, planning ahead to make things happen. And then you're defining and designing that. You're, you're you're, you're taking the time to carefully define what it is you need and providing a design that matters that will actually solve the problem. And then you're sharing that with folks. You're actually uh, making sure that there are stakeholders at the table, people are involved, and you're all working with common standards. And then you're iterating on those designs and, and those definitions. So you're it's not just a very technical thing. This is a, is a human, this is an organizational, this is a, something that, that business and IT folks are involved in. And so you're, you're, you're thinking APIs early on before you're ever uh, implementing any application. In the early phases of any application design process, you're thinking API first. What can we do to be uh, utilizing existing APIs across our infrastructure? What can we be doing to uh, define newer ones and then use third party partner, other types of APIs that are already uh, available on the market? So how do you do API first? Well, 
you do, like I said, you do it before you, you actually implement any of these types of applications. Before you're building desktop applications, web or mobile, you're, you're thinking about what an API should look like, should, should be like what APIs already exist out there is an important piece of it. So before you're embarking on any of these more tangible business facing projects, you're doing API first. You're, you're thinking about it, you're planning, you're, you're, you're designing and defining what it is you need for the APIs to drive this. And then this is going to open up and transform that you're able to then work with multiple devices, types of devices, and be able to understand the, the, the API exists there. But more importantly, you're going to be able to be able to control and define the network. So your DNS all the way down to the VPN. And then you're going to realize that your infrastructure actually has APIs. So the infrastructure you use to drive your APIs have APIs, allowing you to further automate and streamline how you're actually uh, delivering applications, desktop, web, mobile device, or defining the network around your applications using the infrastructure that you depend on. And then all of this opens you up for you know more seamless, more fluid partner relationships. Uh, your resources, your capabilities are already available. Um, it's something you're thinking about first. It's not something you have to scramble to do, excuse me, to make available to your partners. It just is. And then to further show that API first isn't just a technical thing, it's why SaaS is working. You shouldn't be buying a software as a service if it doesn't have an API. You shouldn't be buying any application that doesn't have an API. You should be thinking API first before you invest in that because you don't want to be locked in. You don't want to actually just have to be uh, using their system and not have it seamlessly work with your own other systems, let alone your partner ones. And so you do API first by realizing what the impact is across all of these channels and it's gonna change how you see the landscape across your organization. So how do you sustain this? I'm gonna admit, API first isn't easy. It's not something you can just like say, oh, we're gonna do and, and, and it happens. There, uh, you, have to, you have to have a, a plan and a strategy for how you're gonna actually implement and start rolling this out. And it's something that's very, uh, contract driven so api contracts being open api async api and json schema for the modeling and then how do you derive and and generate uh postman collections from those contracts to dis describe different business situations different business use cases that you'd need to test for providing documentation to public uh consumers or private partner consumers being able to define and share and work around those contracts. And those contracts reflect standard business uh, industry standards. So we're talking PSD2 if you're in banking, FIRE if you're in the healthcare. Uh, there's plenty of existing standards, schema.org when it comes to data modeling. There's a, a wealth of industry standards out there that you should be using and considering as you're developing these contracts. And then all of the artifacts, all of these contracts have to be discoverable and, and you gotta be able to search across them um, with a, no extra work. It's got, it's gotta all be discoverable. So your API operations, your API factory floor uh, should, should have, you know, have APIs as part of the infrastructure, but the APIs that are putting it all to use should, should be discoverable and searchable. So quick question, Thiago, how would you, how would you, would you have a list of API standards per industry to share? Um, I know in telco they use TM Forum Open APIs. So yeah, I, we're we're pulling together right now a, a, what we call an API specification toolbox. Um, you, you can I didn't plug the URL in here, but I'll tweet it out afterwards. Um, we're we're pulling together what are all the 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 core standards for for defining contracts, open API, async API, JSON schema, Postman collections, um, but also what are the industry ones uh, per business sector. So API specification toolbox, you can learn more about that. Um, but then you're, you know, all of this, these contracts are, are test driven, meaning as you're designing and defining these contracts using industry standards, you're crafting tests before you ever start programming, you ever start coding, you have your tests 
uh, defined as individual modular collections that can then be executed to verify those contracts as they progress through the design process and as they uh, they move into production. And all of this, again, has to be uh, searchable um, and discoverable. And then you're communicating around this. There's a feedback loop around all of this. People are trained in open API. People are trained in these standards. And, uh, and people are trained how to do testing. They're, they're, they're educated about how all this works. And they're showed how they can share, collaborate, find the workspaces with the contracts that they need. How do they discover on this? How do they participate in, in, in throughout the process? Um, and everyone's got to be trained on this, not just developers or API developers. Business consumers um, also need to be part of this process. And all of this is essential to sustaining this all in the long term. So why are we doing this? Um, Multi-channel showed you, desktop, web, mobile, device, network, infrastructure. You're able to uh, utilize and put API, uh, pu publish and consume APIs across multiple channels. Um, you're interoperable by default. This is why we're seeing fire specification emerge in the healthcare. This is why PSD2 is emerging in the banking. It's about interoperability. Um, it makes you as a business more portable. You can choose vendors, choose software solutions, and then because your, your data is synced and backed up and, and aggregated by default, uh, you're much more portable. This makes you agile. It makes you efficient in how you're doing things. And when people, your teams are used to thinking in an API first way, have uh, all the workspaces and discoverability they need to find all those contracts that I talked about. They're just much more efficient at, at innovating and then iterating upon uh, those designs of those APIs. It reduces uh, redundancy across uh, your infrastructure. You're, you're reusing and, and iterating upon existing designs because you can find them. You can hit the search and you can find that you have an image API before you go building another. You have a logging API that uses a common standard already in place. All of that's discoverable. And because you have APIs uh, exposed at this layer, you have workspaces, it's all, all discoverable uh, and everything, all, even the APIs themselves, you know, have APIs. It makes it all much more observable. You can monitor what is going on across your API factory floor without any additional work. You can tune into the, all the Amazon APIs for the wealth of Amazon services that you use or Azure or Google. So because you're API first, everything is, is just much more fluid, much more observable, much more known um, because people are educated and things are contract driven. Uh, it, it just works. It's much more uh, flexible and, and agile and you can do what you need to get done. So what about the scope of this? I've kind of touched on a little bit of this. Think about the change that the cloud has made in our world. Cloud was the big first kind of seismic shift of API first. Uh, when that, when Amazon EC2 and S3 merged, you know, they just had an API and a CLI. There was no interface. So this was very much an API first transformation and look at the impact it has had on our world. Think about that with mobile, you know, every device in our pocket, our iPads, um, all are using APIs to get the resources that they need. So uh, think of the impact that mobile's had in the last, gosh, where are we going, 15, 20 years now um, of mobile kind of the application ecosystem around that. And then I touched on PSD2 and banking. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing the, 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 the growing swells and the, the future waves of API first present in both banking and healthcare. I mentioned PSD2 in the European Commission is, is API regulation saying that all banks have to have the same API, follow the same design, and those are being evolved to be more, um, more structured around the overall API operations. And they're coming to the US. You see the CFPB in the United States preparing for a similar API regulatory set of rules. And then healthcare. If you look at the Health and Human Services in the United States, Center for Medicaid and Medicare, uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, they've been issuing waves of rulings in the last year 
uh, that define that you, if you're a healthcare provider in these spaces and doing business with the U.S. government, you have to have a fire spe uh, fire API, which is a, a healthcare standard for API interoperability. So you see the the coming waves of of this regulatory rules, but also these standards, these open API definitions and sets of JSON schema, so we can test against these uh, regulatory rules emerging and defining these industries. We're seeing transportation, we're seeing insurance, we're seeing others follow that suit and government getting on board and understanding more about what's going on with APIs. And that can be good with regulatory and leadership and that can be a challenge when you see things like uh, the Department of Justice suing Facebook for Instagram, uh, acquiring Instagram and uh, WhatsApp and so these are very API ecosystem driven conversations, um, but it, it's all a glimpse of what the future holds. The cloud and the mobile are how we got here, banking and healthcare, and then the government conversation is, is kind of insight of where we're going with this. But you've got to be API first to be able to see this, to respond to it, and be able to operate in this, in this climate. So what is the impact of all of this? it helps you deal with change. So when you're API first, you're able to address change uh, in a much more constructive, uh, planned way. Um, it, it doesn't surprise you as much. You're ready for uh, when it happens and you know how you got here. You have clear definition of, of all the late last 10, 15, 20 versions and you have the next uh, five to 10 versions planned out. You're starting to plan this out. It's a much more known universe. You know your resources, what your resources and capabilities are. All of your digital assets are at your fingertips. You can take action and do things. Um, it's all right there in a known workspace, available in a search toolbar, and all of the the feedback loop is is available. Everyone can tune in, can participate, get notifications. So the entire factory floor is a, is a much more collaborative environment which just allows for automation. When you have all of your APIs defined internal partner and public, um, you have all of your auth layers defined, your teams are working in workspaces and able to uh, collaborate and work around open APIs and, and Postman collections that define these APIs, they're just able to do a lot more with them. They're able to connect the dots, build workflows, uh, starting to flow around specific business use cases, and that just increases the velocity. Think of a factory floor. Now think of like Amazon uh, warehouse uh, with rollers where you're rolling boxes out. You know, think of those boxes as, as APIs. You're much more, uh, everything is, is much more fluid. Teams know how to work, know how to iterate and evolve. People can just move faster. Uh, you can change APIs, you can go in new directions, and you can make money in new and interesting ways. So it really changes overall approach of how you look at operations if you're API first and you're able to do this. It's not easy to, to achieve. It's something that will take time, but <coughs> you need to think about it at this scale not just stuck in the are we design first or are we uh, code first. We got to be able to elevate it to uh, new heights. Losing my voice there almost. <clears throat> so hopefully you can see, you know, by that, that list of providers that I showed you who's API first. API first is not just when you start your API in the process of when you're planning. It's your overall team view of all of what you're capable as an, of, uh, as an organization so that you're able to respond to change. You're already tuned into what your customers are talking about. You have feedback loops set up. Your teams are already contract literate. They can speak open API. They can speak JSON schema. They're effectively testing APIs. All of this collects, collectively puts you in, 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 a, in a leadership position in a, first or ahead of of your competition. So if you're not able to do this, you're not able to uh, be able to work with APIs in this way, both publishing and consuming, 
you're just going to be always following up, trying to uh, keep keep up, you know, with what's going on, where the changes are going. If you're doing API first, you're going to be able to lead the pack. You're going to be much more comfortable. Uh, you're going to know what you're capable of, and you're going to be able to get out ahead and actually iterate and and be much more competitive. And so really API first to kind of close on is, is not just about designer code. This is about process. This is about, you know, high level business vision of, of APIs across your organization. And so don't get caught up in the, in the, in the little, little down in the weeds arguments, hopefully from, you know, to bring in uh, what I talked with Steve Wozniak about earlier is when I asked him, you know, what's the biggest technological change that has happened, he really couldn't point to one. He, he talked about, you know, the importance of people. He talked about the importance of iterations. And really the ones that have made the biggest impact are the ones that had uh, a, a much more solid strategy and planning in place. And then the last 20 years, you can see across the list of companies who have made the biggest impact, API first is, is is part of their thinking and planning. You got Amazon, you got Google, you got Microsoft being able to catch up with Azure. You just see a lot of uh, uh, different players emerging in existing industries as well as defining entirely new industries. I think Amazon reflects that well with, with transforming commerce, bookstores, um, very traditional existing, but then totally changing how we would think about doing business across all industries using the Amazon cloud. And you see that uh, just continuing to play out with the news this week about uh, the change in leadership there. So really just ask yourself, you know, where are you going to be in the spectrum? What kind of, uh, you know, how you're approaching your operations? And, you know, for resources kind of tune into this, you know, at this scale, um, really, you know, you got to be thinking platform levels. So head over to postman.com API platform kind of get you thinking at this scale, at this scope. And then uh, look at the Postman Economics Report to start thinking of more of the business side of this and why why this matters. Um, with that said, I'll look, what do you got to say, Anita? Let me check. Any required reading suggestions for new to API folks? Um, so I do have a URL I will, I will uh, tweet out after this, but... Um, See if I can Google it. Google it nowadays. Uh, let me see. Nope, that's not it. That's not it. Um, it is API knowledge. Let's see if it comes up. Nope. I'll tweet this out so you have it. Here it is. It's published on GitHub. You can find the URL. Um, but I'll tweet it out. It's got all of the sites that you need to tune in, all the newsletters, everything you need to, to tune in to what's going on around APIs. And with that said, I'll leave it there. So thanks, uh, Ken. Um, hopping over into Slido real quick, we did have a question from Jocelyn. Um, how does API first design work in a backend for front end ecosystem? i.e. React.js. She also clarifies uh, that her group doesn't split our work from front end to back end. Um, they develop vertically. So in writing an API, it's common to do the dev first, um, the front end dev first, or build the back end specifically to support the front end. Any any thoughts or comments Ooh, on that? That's a, that's a pretty lofty one. I'm going to dodge a little bit on that. What I am going to say is make sure you have a diverse API toolbox that includes REST, GraphQL, uh, to kind of support those design patterns because there's not one design pattern to kind of rule them all in a, in a back end for front ends environment. Um, but with that said, um, I'm going to dodge the rest of it, and that's a pretty lofty one. We could do a whole other talk on that. Awesome. Looks like uh, there aren't any other questions in the chat. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, so this uh, right now we'll have about a half hour of a break. Um, we also do have two sessions starting in a half hour for doing some movement, um, doing some guided stretching. Um, then starting again in an hour, we will rejoin with our sessions. Um, feel free to join me. Um, I'll be part of a talk with uh, Shashank um, Aswath-Hawatsi um, for using your Postman in your workflows. Um, once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ken, for, for sharing API first. 
Um, any any last comments uh, before sending everyone out? No. Um, thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, feel free to find me on Twitter at Kinlane or API Evangelist, and happy to answer other questions and help you kind of map this to the Postman platform, helping you actually realize what I've been talking about. I have lots of ways to, to walk you through that. So feel free to reach out personally. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.